chairman sir shall we start there are 50 think, yes so we are trying to we are trying to nishant kumar also okay uh, he, he is about to join okay okay just uh, he, we can go he ahead. has he has got the link okay and uh, soon he will join okay so dear friends uh, we are going to start a webinar on future trends and potential in electric vehicle and charging stations uh, just after few uh, minutes as soon as the permission of uh, chairman and uh, chairman electric division board granted then we will start the webinar so it's a very interesting topic to know the what kind of the in, innovations are going on in electric vehicle because there are number of uh, manufacturers who are engaged in electric vehicle as uh, the environment uh, pollution is uh, going to severe and the one of the solutions can we can get if uh, pollution free vehicles will run on on the road so in this webinar we will discuss and know the what is the future trends and what is the potential especially for india especially for our country there are number of uh, state governments as well as uh, central government also uh, announce there are lot of concessions for electric vehicles so we will know uh, such uh, uh, offers or the concessions as well from the panelist so we have three panelist one from nilit Kal uh, kalikat another from hevels and uh, last but not least dr nishant from iit jodhpur so we have very uh, sound knowledge uh, uh, providers as panelist unfortunately professor manoj kumar panda who is the professor in uh, gb pant college Odi Garhwal, he is our uh, executive member from Electrical Division. Unfortunately, he went to Noida, and uh, he gave me the opportunity to moderate the webinar. So now I request uh, uh, Chairman Sir, Professor uh, Arora Sir, kindly give me the permission to start. Start, sir. Please start. thank you sir thank you so now uh, the webinar we are going to start the webinar i say time to uh, welcome all participants as well as the uh, guests and uh, panelists i request uh, sri dharamchandra arora ji who is the chairman of uh, uttarakhand state center i i uh, uh, i would like to read uh, about his uh, shri dharam chandra arora attended the b degree in electrical engineering from iit roorkee in 1969 previously known as university of roorkee 
He joined Uttar Pradesh Ele State Electricity Board as assistant engineer in 1971. He was promoted to the post of executive engineer in 1986 and deputy general manager in 2003 and general manager in 2005. He remained the in charge of administration and personnel at UP Power Corporation. Besides other important words, he had worked as a specialist of a small hydro in NEDA, a government of a UP organization. He had also worked as consultant engineer in Rajasthan and Uttarakhand with private organizations for about six years. He had worked for more than 17 years in design, construction and maintenance of more than 50 numbers of small, medium and major hydroelectric power stations of various capacities located in various hill districts of Uttarakhand. He had been instrumental in fixing the judicious electricity tariff of various categories of consumers and forming the policies of releasing electricity connection and solving the various types of problems of industry consumers for the entire state of UP. He also played a key role in formation of various policies for the various cadres of employees and office, officers of UP Power Corporation after trifurcation of UP State Electricity Board and successfully performed the coordination work of solving the electricity power problems raised in UP State Assembly and in Parliament also. He had also conducted the training of three batches of students in solar energy under Suremitra Skill Development Program at Uttarakhand State Center. At present, he is working with the Institution of Engineers India, Uttarakhand State Center as chairman. So, with these words, I request uh, uh, DC Arora, sir, kindly welcome the panelists, participant, and our guest. Thank you. Thank you, Gupta, sir. Uh, good evening, everybody. Today we are organizing a technical webinar on future trends and potential in electrical vehicles and charging stations in association with NILET, National Institute of Electronics and Information Technology, Haridwar. Under the aegis of Electrical Engineering Division Board, Institution of Engineers India. On this occasion, I on my behalf and on the behalf of Dr. Fund State Center welcome our um, president, Honorable President Engineer Hemant Othakre, who will be joining us later on. Our immediate past president, Engineer Narain Singh Ji, and President-elect Engineer Chinmay Devnath Ji, Institution of Engineers, Chairman Electrical Division Board, Professor S.K. Kalla Ji, Chairman of Committee of Advancement and Technology of in and Engineering, Dr. G. Ranganath Ji, Engineer Anurag Kumar, Director Nilit Haridwar, our learned speakers, Engineer M.K. M. K. Manoj Kumar, Principal Technical Officer Nilit Kalikat, Dr. Aman Jha, GM R&D, Lighting, Electronics and Corporate Research and Innovations Department, Heavens, Noida, Dr. Nishant Kumar, Assistant Professor, IIT Jodhpur, and our moderator, Engineer D.C. Gupta Ji, and our AC member, and our honorary secretary engineer S. C. Chauhan. All the EC members of Uttarakhand State Center, ladies and gentlemen who are attending this webinar and have spared their valuable time from their busy schedule. I also welcome our council members and corporate members of Institution of Engineers who have joined us web uh, this webinar and students also who have joined this webinar from various parts of our country. Since long, we are using oil as a main fuel in transport sector. The main fuel either we use in the form of petrol, diesel, or gas. This comes from oil producing countries we import it in the form of crude oil. And this crude oil comes in uh, uh, costly because in the last 50 years, we are observing that the cost of this oil, crude oil is being uh, revised upward many times by the OPEC countries. Since transport is our basic need and the import of oil is necessary for our country, this oil import bill 
uh, impacts our economy badly. This uh, import of oil is not only imported by our country, other countries also, and their economy is also uh, badly affected. Since every country is facing this problem, therefore the scientists and engineers of globally have come up with a solution that we should use electrical vehicles and we should use the electricity as a fuel in this vehicle. And all the major countries corrections are available. Previously, regular vehicles have been using internal combustion engine on the top and have petrol, diesel, or gas as a fuel. Now EVs are using electricity and propelled through uh, propelled by electromagnetism. The electricity is stored in the battery, powers the electric motors. Few companies such as Toyota or Lexus are producing the vehicles contained with IC and the electric motors. These electricity stored in the battery permanently comes from the recapturing the energy through regenerative braking. Nowadays, the battery operated electric vehicles are without internal combustion engines are getting popular day by day in the public. We see that the tire rickshaw, previously was, uh, the cycle tire rickshaw has been, all the market has been captured by the electrical operated tire rickshaws. Today we have our learned speakers and experienced also, experienced speakers, panelists with us, who will explain the various types of EVs, driving ranges, regenerative braking, driving, uh, drive train system, and type of charging of these vehicles, various problems coming up in these electric vehicles and the solution in detail. Thank you. And over to engineer uh, DC Guptaji for onward continuation of this webinar. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Very well said. The uh, fossil oils are disappearing as well as they are creating the pollution. And so we must uh, uh, switch over to electric vehicles. Uh, now, I would like to inform you that this webinar is jointly organized by Institution of Engineers Uttarakhand State Center, as well as NILIT Haridwar. NILIT uh, means uh, Nest, uh, National Institute of Info Electronics and Information Technology. We have a very um, sound institution at Haridwar. Uh, now, I would like to introduce our guest and chairman of electrical engineering division since this webinar is also under the edges of the electric uh, electrical engineering division so i would like to introduce uh, dr sudhir kumar kala sir dr sudhir kala kala after b electrical joined in 1971 as assistant engineer in Rajasthan State Electricity Board, Jaipur. And after getting merit promotions year by year in 2008, he attended highest position in the organization as chairman and managing director in Rajasthan State Generating Company for three years. During service, he completed ME Electrical Engineering and PhD in 1986 from Malvi Engineering, uh, Regional Engineering College, Jaipur. He received many awards such as Rajasthan State Award in Power Sector from Hon Honorable Governor Rajasthan, awarded by IEI Eminent Engineer, Personality Award 2008, Flag for Eminence and Contribution in Production Engineering 2011, and in 2020 awarded scroll of honors as council member on the occasion of IEI centenary year for outstanding contribution to the cause of engineering and national building. Recently honored by Honorable Governor of Chhattisgarh on Teacher's Day, 5th September 2020, 20, uh, 22. Also received award for best president, best assistant governor, four avenue award, 
best district officer from Rotary International District. And he traveled around 25 countries across globe, including USA, UK, Japan, Canada, Italy, Nepal, etc. And presented technical papers uh, in various conference, international conferences, published number of technical papers in reputed journals. After retirement, he worked as director, principal and professor electrical engineering in prestigious SKIT Engineering College, Jaipur, till 2018. Thereafter, shifted to Seattle, USA with uh, her daughter. Presently, he, he is working as CMD of SP International Consultancy Engineering Services Company, council member of the Institution of Engineers India. Now, he is chairman, electrical, uh, electrical division board, IEI, and patron of NITWA, Rajasthan chapter member of board of governors in many universities. He gained 40 years of, years of experience in industry, seven years in academic, and 10 years in of consultancy. So we have such a kind of versatile personality. Professor Sudhir Kumar Kallasar kindly graced the, uh, this webinar. Uh, Professor Sudhir, sir. Yeah, president of the student engineer, Dr. Atil Patreji, all past presidents present over here, council members, chairman of the Uttaran Kandit Dharma Prasadji, and honorary secretary of the Uttaran Center, all the IG members and members of the student engineers Uttarakhand and also the par uh, participants and panelists. This is the topic which have been chosen by the Uttarakhand Center is really very close to my heart. In fact, I have of uh, work on these electric vehicles. And uh, you will be glad to note that this electric vehicle, I am driving myself in USA for quite a number of years. So I know that how it is useful and how it is convenient and uh, for the market, in the market also. The, in the USA, of course, uh, this electric vehicle is coming up in a very, very fast way. But in India, it takes some time to come to that stage. Regarding this uh, charging of the electric vehicles, the, there are bi-directional charging. There is two-way charging. That allows energy to flow both ways from the grid into the car and vehicles to grid, that is V2G, or to your home, that is V2H. This a major breakthrough in charging technology compared to traditional one-way charging. That only power, it can power the car. In USA, I tell you that this uh, America's electric vehicles market has surged over the last decade and it's only expected to grow further. The billion administration, the president of the USA, that administration has allocated billions towards EV transition in the hopes that by 2030, electric cars make up 50% of all new cars sales in America. In India also, electric vehicles market is growing up and also it is on the fast way mode. Some of the cost features which I have worked out that the battery, their main constraints are two constraints in electric vehicles and uh, for going uh, in a fa fast way. One is the cost of the battery, which resulted in the increase in the cost of the car. Second is the charging stations. 
the lithium ion battery cost in india is rupees 40320 per pack and uh, even the cheapest electric car available in india is varying from rupees 5 lakhs to 15 lakhs and the cost of charging station is around rupees 4 to 4.5 kilowatt per hour and most of the electric car runs for 220 to 280 kilometers in a single charge and if you take the luxury car or big cars that is ranging around 400 kilometers in uh, this uh, charging of the electric car can be done at home or it can be done in the mall or the offices or the petrol pump or in a public place this uh, charging stations are available and uh, the charging which is done in the office or at home is called the box charger wall box charger but it is very slow and charging is very slow for that purpose so the petrol pump network a public electric charging station network is established by various companies in india like tata energy efficient services bolt india all corporation etc this uh, this uh, charging stations which are being installed in the at the mall or at the platform is a fast charging and what it cost also so cost of the best electric car which is uh, expected to be around rupees 24 lakhs and the cost of the luxury car is going to be around rupees 1.1 crore and if we are uh, establishing the charging station then the cost of charging station will be for establishing the charging station is rupees 1 lakh to rupees 50 lakhs depend upon the how much type of charge uh, chargers they are charging the station they are using so the the trend which is going to be for the electric vehicle is really challenging one and of course our in, in our country also this prime minister honorable prime minister has taken this uh, initiative through their administration and they are giving lot of uh, emphasis on this that we should have the more electric vehicles in the market as compared to the uh, conventional the main purpose is about as told by our chairman that there are a lot of advantages and uh, we have to uh, switch over to electric vehicle uh, but uh, we have to uh, on the other hand we have to reduce the cost of the batteries as well as the cost of the charging stations also the one most important because i am i was the chair, chairman of the electricity board so i know that the main constraint which is going to be come over is the power network for charging the station stability charging station we definitely need a lot of power and network to have the uh, charging this stations otherwise we can go for the solar charging also and they are working on that also and in usa and this tesla which is the biggest uh, uh, electric car uh, vehicle manufacturer and they are putting the satellite their own satellite for uh, charging as well as for further uh, improvement in this thing. so a lot of research going on i i visited to the uh, uh, manufacturers of the electric vehicle in usa as well as in the uh, industries also and i have seen that lot of research is going on on in this direction how to reduce the cost of the battery as well as to have the charging station so this is the all that we have got the very good panelist available here and they, they will definitely throw light on this that how to how, what are the modifications is going in the battery so that the cost of battery is used and uh, how to make the network in india for the charging station thank you very much and thanks a lot for inviting me for Uh, for this address thank you thank you professor sudhir sir uh, you have pointed out the uh, constraints about the charging stations really is a uh, uh, 
person who, who who is going to procure the electric vehicle he uh, doubly thinks about the uh, uh, where uh, where the charging stations nearby is uh, situated so now lot of innovations are going on as you said that uh, number of uh, kilometers can be uh, uh, has been increased as well as the uh, there are lot of innovations are going on in charging stations also and uh, we can uh, charge from grid or we can provide the uh, our power to the grid as well and uh, there are number of uh, public places where the charging stations are going to establish even uh, we can uh, 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 put this type of the charging station in universities colleges ex schools etc so it can be uh, in addition of the petrol pump as well the public places uh, it, it can be the helpful so thank you very much sir uh, now as i said that uh, this program is uh, jointly organized by nilit haridwar as well as uttarakhand state center so now uh, uh, in inaugural session i would like to invite shri anurag kumar ji he is the director of uh, uh, nilit haridwar i would like to first of all um, tell about the uh, brief profile of the anurag sir sri anurag kumar is working with national institute of electronics and Infor information technology government of india as scientist e and presently holding charge of director of nilit haridwar since 2017 he is vice president of computer society of india haridwar chapter since 2021 he obtained his bachelor's degree of engineering from mn nit allahabad formerly uh, mn rec and is presently pursuing phd in computer science also he has more than 25 years of experience in academic and project management he has executed the data digitization project of national population register in capacity in the capacity of zonal officer of ajmer zone for 16 17 districts of rajasthan he has been head of project management unit at nilit headquarters delhi he has monitor various infrastructure capacity building projects sponsored by ministry of electronics and information technology Such, such as setting up nilit centers in various parts of the country with ajmer patna roper le etc he has also made remarkable achievement of establishing regional office of nilit in haridwar uttarakhand in record time and making it self sustainable we are happy to mention that under his leadership nilit haridwar has proposed to jointly conduct the training course at iei uttarakhand state center so welcome anurag sir now i request kindly grace the occasion anurag sir i hope i am audible and visible to everyone uh, a very good afternoon to the president institution of engineers dr h o thakre sir chairman institution of engineers uttarakhand shri ramchandra sir dr sudeep kala sir dr g ragna ji the uh, sc chauhan sir on the bit who is on the on the uh, secretary from institution uh, of engineers uttarakhand eminent speakers dr amansha dr nishant kumar and my colleague uh, shri manoj kumar from direct character and to all the participants who have joined us in today's session uh, we all know that electric uh, vehicles have been making headlines for a few decades but it is only in recent years that evs have been attracting seminal interest innovation and government of india is also focusing on this sector and is leaving no stones unturned in bringing the pollution level of earth down by promoting ev manufacturing infrastructure development and giving subsidies as well 
EVs will certainly help in reducing CO2 emissions and curb air pollution because it is the uh, it is one of the biggest challenges we have before the humanity. We all have to work together to like the Although there are some challenges, uh, as Dr. Kala uh, rightly said, like battery cost, life, and charging stations. These are also being addressed by the researchers, industry, and government so that we all move fast towards a cleaner and pollution free environment. As this sector is a very upcoming one. I feel the need of skilling is also arising very fast. We all know that uh, skill development is one of the essential ingredients for India's future economic growth as the country transforms into a diversified and internationally competitive economy. And it is the right time when we need to provide structured training and skilling programs in this technology for generating skilled manpower to meet the demand which is increasing day by day. Uh, now it is already doing its bit by organizing workshops and webinars for sensitizing people and also conducting training programs for skilling of youth who is looking for career in this emerging sector. I'm happy to get associated in this event and uh, I hope that all the participants will gain good amount of knowledge and some really, really beneficial information from this work. I'm sure that you all must be waiting for listening to our eminent speakers on the topic. So with these words, I convey my best wishes to everyone who is participating in this webinar. And thanks to uh, Aradun chapter of uh, uh, Institution of Engineers that uh, they have given uh, this chance to be associated with that, that we may uh, like, uh, motivate people uh, and we may like uh, enlighten people on this particular technology because this is the technology and change our thank you thank you very much thank you thank you sir with the graces of uh, uh, sudhir sir and rag sir rura sir uh, really it will be a wonderful session uh, since we have uh, Two professors, one uh, from Neelit Kalikat and another from IIT Jodhpur, and very academically sound uh, person, uh, Dr. Uh, Aman, who is uh, in industry. Now, I would like to uh, introduce Dr. Aman. Now, uh, panelists are coming in role, so uh, participants are ready. Uh, if, if if they are uh, not holding the pen and uh, copy, kindly uh, arrange paper and pencil also, yep, or pen. So now the first panelist, Dr. Aman, will deliver some uh, lecture. First of all, I would like to introduce him, and then uh, uh, I will tell the, what he is going to uh, tell. Dr. Aman is working with Havels Noida campus since June 2021 as GM R&D in corporate research and innovation department. In current role, he is associated with power converter design for LED driver, which are applicable for home light, lighting, street lighting, solar LED light, lighting, and smart lighting. Dr. Jha completed his PhD from IIT Delhi in 2017 and MTech from IIT Bombay in 2005 in power electronics and electric machine control area. He has total 15 years of industrial experience on smart switching mode power supply, AC to DC and DC to DC power converter, product design, control system, stability, analysis, automation, industrialization, power quality, high frequency magnetic, EMI, EMC, semiconductor power devices, and components selections. He was associated with other reputed industry as a designer as well as managerial roles, or STM 
ST Microelectronics from 2015 to 2020, Barco Electronics 2010 to 2015, Algro Microsystems from 2008 to 2010, and Delta Electronics from 2005 to 2008 in power conversion domain. Other voluntary work he is associated with reviewer of reputed journal, technical speaker of reputed for forums, faculty development program schemes, trainer, senior, he is senior member of IEEE -E and visiting professor of NIIT University. He has more than 56 publications in reputed journals, IEEE, -E -E, triple E and has several free designs available on the different technical forums. So Dr. Aman will deliver electric vehicle design ecosystem, power electronics perspective. So uh, Prof. Uh, Dr. Aman, please come and uh, uh, deliver your lecture. Thank you, sir. Nice, uh, I think nice introduction. Thanks for giving such opportunity. Hope I am audible and visible to everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So uh, I think this is a great opportunity to deliver in the in front of uh, such a learned paper from the industry. I think as well as the academics, all people are there. So, Excuse me, sir. Yeah. You can uh, uh, speak slightly loudly or uh, okay. keep the mic. Uh, uh, Okay. Uh, print of mouth. Yes. Now, it now it's very fine. Yeah. Is it okay now? Okay. Yeah. 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 Thank. You. So thank you, sir. So thanks for giving the opportunity to deliver a talk on the technical side of the EV ecosystem, and uh, it is nice opportunity for me to work in this domain and uh, explain the technical part uh, to the people and academics. I think. Uh, sorry. Just a minute. Hope the screen is coming there. Yes, sir. The screen is coming, but uh, you, uh, you have to presentation. The presentation is there? Yeah, yeah. Now coming. Just, just now uh, keep it in full screen. Is it okay now? Yes, sir. Thank you, Gupta, sir. Basically, I I am basically I am delivering the talk here. So, topic is electric vehicle design ecosystem and idea is to put the power electronics per perspective for the designer. So the topic basically uh, I have taken just a uh, application area. I think uh, students are also there. So what kind of uh, design aspect for the students and uh, that will that is the basically power electronics application area. Then I will discuss about the EV and uh, so EV if we see the for power converter application side so there is two stream, one is a charger and that is a transmission and control, that is the electric motor. So these are the two areas for the power converter, the power electronics engineers to work with. Then the new innovation is coming up in the wideband gap devices. So I have just given, I, I have just taken few slides for the GAN and silicon carbide kind of uh, use case. So being a technical people and uh, I think students are there. So I think if you go through the power electronics design application area, so these are the different uh, sets of uh, industry there they can work and understand their uh, suitability. Like automotive, I think automotive is the big chunk of uh, application for the designers. Even these days also, even in the fossil fuel is there, still we have a lot of uh, opportunity because the power electronics contents are keep on rising in uh, running uh, means uh, automotive domain. For example, car audio, infotainment, telemetrics, automotive sensors, 
So here there is the opportunity to work. And then the, if you see the computers, lighting applications, consumer electronics, industrial electronics, medicals, we will not go detail on that. So just we will explain the area where the designer can uh, work and uh, go with their uh, excellence in terms of uh, design part, industrialization part, as well as if the sales marketing also will be the case. So for example, energy, military, tele telemetrics, these are the broad application area and these are keep on emerging and uh, people are working globally and a uh, lot of opportunity for in the hand of the electronics engineer. So now coming quickly, I think we have the very less time. So first I will explain the charger part. So if we go through the, to any electric vehicle, so uh, there is the different kind of charging scheme. So if are, if if you see the any vehicle, just uh, I'm taking a marker. So um, there is the charger if we see here. So if inside the car, there is the onboard charger. And uh, if there is only battery pack inside the car, the charger will be normally, we can say this as a charging station. And uh, third is the wireless charger. So these are the three kind of uh, different charging schemes for uh, any kind of electric vehicles depends on the EV, so we can go with the, what kind of charger. So if we classify that, so these are the three kind of uh, charging schemes, like conductive, inductive, and the battery swap. And uh, in terms of the presence of the charger, where the charger is present. So onboard charger, it is named as the uh, OBC, charging station that is offboard charger, so in this case, in offboard case, there is the charger is not inside the vehicle. Then the wireless charging, it is on development phase for the EV application. So, but it is also the good part. So if you compare all the, all kind of charger in terms of the convenience, cost, service time, power level, efficiency, battery lifetime, extendition, and the last point that is very much important, and uh, that is impact on the grid. So these are different schemes. So conductive scheme is uh, basically in terms of EVC. So uh, there is the more efficiency in the AC charging. And the, in the means wireless charging, there is the issue, but it is uh, more convenience, dynamic and static. So basically this will give you the idea of what kind of uh, charger and where we can uh, develop and like this is the battery swap top topology. So here battery swap means uh, you have to just change the battery and uh, battery, you will get the charge battery as a uh, means a pre-charged condition. We will not go in detail of each and every aspect, but we should understand. So what kind of uh, comparisons and what kind of the thought process is there. So this is the first kind of charger that is the OBC onboard charger. Onboard charger means if you see here, this is, if this is your EV, so charger is inside your car. And uh, you are getting power from the charging station, direct AC, and that AC will come to your uh, charger. And that inside the charger, you, you, you have different block sets. So like uh, AC to DC converter, DC to DC converter, then you will, there is some protection unit. Then the BMS, each uh, and every blocks has a different level of complexity. And uh, we should understand and a uh, lot of design aspects is there. I will show you some block diagram also on the different level. So this kind of OBC, there is a limitation here. If you see the, in terms of the weight, if you consider, consider this of the charger, as we know the there is the battery inside the vehicle. So charger will be also inside the vehicle. So that will create some weight. So there is some limitation here. Power level here is up to uh, 22 kilowatt. We can go up to 22 kilowatt maximum for the in uh, means uh, onboard charger. And there is the means if you see the complexity side, being a designer, you have to work with AEC Q100. 
you are going for the discrete kind of uh, solution means the components so aec means automotive electronic uh, means components that certification is needed so here we need some expertise in terms of the automotive grade and for uh, ic use case you have to use any comp all any component inside this charger it should be qualified from the aec q11100 so uh, and block diagram if you see so the power factor correction circuits then you you should have a dc dc converter and the auxiliary power supply is needed to run the boards on the board it may have the operational amplifier and all and and dc bus it all depends on the vehicle to vehicle what kind of uh, battery is there so just i have taken the reference for 200 volt to 450 volt just i, I am giving you the idea if you have to develop the power converter for the OBC kind of things, you have to take care in terms of the component, in terms of the topology, and in terms of the scalability. For example, if you are working with, with e rixa kind of applications, that is unregulated market. So there, uh, that uh, power, different block sets will be different kind of things, then your uh, cost parameters and other things will be there. So if you go in the EV domain, so there are low speed vehicles medium speed vehicle and high speed vehicle again in terms of the regulation there is the means unregulated market and regulated market so regulated means like e electric car and unregulated like you see electric cycle rickshaw and all so their power converter and topology could be different what could be that so these are the different uh, depends on the power level if you are working with 2 to 3.6 kilowatt range then you have to go with interleaved boost converters. So I think this will be this is again the area to develop design a interleaving boost converter, different chipsets available like ST, TI, and other company they have analog and digital kind of uh, sets. So why interleaving? That that is the this lecture we cannot explain each and every aspect. So interleaving basically helps you to um, regulate the output voltage in a means a cost effective manner and then second topology semi bridgeless totem pole depends on the uh, means uh, power level you have to go with the different kind of topology and i think i have segregated here up to 20 to 22 kilowatt range so this is the pfc converters then the dc dc converters again three it is applicable in all the industry they are using like full bridge llc up to 10 to 11 kilowatt three level half bridge llc this will go up to 22 kilowatt okay and now coming quickly to the i think uh, onboard charger i think there is no doubt on onboard charger onboard charger is inside the car now we are talking for the charging infra or charging in I means basically char um, DC charging stations. Why we are talking this is a charging infra? Because if you see here, so the charger is the part of the charging station. And in your car, there is your battery inside of only BMS is there. And there is some uh, protection circuit. So if you see the vacuum is the small part, and but uh, means uh, charging station, charging infra is the bigger section so here you i will also explain the different kind of level of charging so if you but the top level if you see there is the ac that will go to rectify to dc then dc dc converter and the variable dc supply and there is some safety interlock and it this, this will give you some idea of the what kind of charging station and dc charging station should be look like depends on the power level and if, um, and the complexity will be different Okay, so and uh, block diagram wise, it is uh, different than the means uh, onboard charger. Here, as the charging needs and power level needs is high, so here three phase PFC scheme will be needed, and the complexity is a little bit more. And I think in India, people are working, and there is still we have the growth on this. We will not go each and every things like silicon carbide and all silicon mosfet it will take too much time to explain in each and every block but top level these are the different block sets and it is a teamwork for the any industry so not a single person can do the entire design 
So quickly now going to the smart charging, I think some um, I think we have already discussed and uh, some panelists is telling about the, what is the smart charging. So smart charging people is talking as a B2X, vehicle to X. That is a new kind of things. It will basically create the means ownership and financial help for the car means buyer also as well as to the means customer as well. So there is the, I think we know the bidirectional facility will be there. So smart charging is the big area. Here you can see the renewables are there, generations, a lot of things we can involve here. And uh, it will give the EV can be made more sustainable by charging by renewables. I think everyone knows this part and why uh, that is also is uh, known to the public domain because uh, means uh, it will help you to demand in when you, you, we have the peak load for example these are the applications local load balancing everyone knows that what kind of uh, load fluctuations is there based on that we have the load scheduling and all so but again the benefit of renewable energy utilization price based charging peak saving grid backup so these are the benefits of v2x x it means it could be anything home to vehicle, vehicle to home, grid to vehicle. So a lot of uh, things are there. And other benefit will be the load balancing. If you have three cars coming for the charging application, you can do schedule like this. You can do schedule like this. So these kind of uh, thought process is there for the load, load balance, balancing purpose. And the utilization of renewable energy also help for the smart charging, like wind, wind. If you see this diagram, I have taken some differences. So wind power generation, solar generation, and smart charging generation. So all will be overlaps at the some place and it will benefit the EV ecosystem. Price-based charging, again, people know it. So as the time permits, as the time, based on the time, you will, you have the charge will be more normally in developed country. They have the time based charging. Even in India, also in Western side, they, they have the time based charging. So that will be the beneficial for the smart charging application. Peak saving will be another advantage for the smart like vehicle to grid. You can uh, supply power if you have batteries enough charge, and there is a demand from the grid side, you can get the money. Grid backup, again, this is the advantage. And uh, uh, now quickly going to the, I think three parts we have discussed, onboard charging, offboard charging, and the smart charging. These are, and now how we can charge, because we know the present scenario, there is the means uh, petrol pump kind of things. We have to pay the money to there. So different kind of connector also evolve in the market. So for example, if you had to get the power from, uh, from the grid, basically charging station, AC only, there is no DC. Then these different kind of uh, connectors is there. Connector basically helps in terms of the payment also. So type one connector, Tesla, US connector, and type two connectors. So basically it, it will give you the idea. So even payment as well as how much power you can take. So this is for the DC charging connectors. This, uh, this is also a standardized, depends on the country, US, U Europe, Japan. China, we are we are following European. And uh, what kind of uh, that connector is connecting in terms of getting the power and get price as well as the battery uh, means uh, bat battery should be not overcharged or undercharged and there should be battery status basically, BMS kind of input. So this kind of pins are involved on the connector. So at the same time as EV is going through the standardization, so uh, as we have the charger, different kind of charger already we discussed. So like uh, onboard charger, offboard charger, wireless charging, and uh, battery swap, these are the four techniques. Normally offboard charger and onboard charger is much popular these days. And uh, battery swap is again, in uh, means basically people are thinking, so it is not in full fledged and uh, and wireless charging in the growth path and people are working on their technology side basically they are in technology side 
so now the sce is the agency automatic agent uh, auto, automobile uh, engineers they have made the means uh, standards so if you are working with voltage levels use case interface and power levels so level 1 chargers is like this this basically this will be known as a home based charging like on a regulated market people are using such kind of charger and then the level 2 charger these are uh, basically ev evsp means electric vehicle supply equipment they they have to follow level 2 so they are uh, european 400 volt us 240 volt three phase kind of system is there and uh, these are the different uh, volt power level and current level and the fast charging is the level 3 so level fast charging again you know that it will take the enough power in a shortest time so it is coming under the level 3 category and uh, another is for this is for ac charging and this is for dc charging standards for dc charging standards level 1 up to 40 kilowatt level 2 is up to 90 kilowatt level 3 is up to 240 kilowatt basically i am just just summarizing the things so and uh, sadamo charger again it is the international uh, electro mechanical academy and sadamo standards again here also we have the level 1 level 2 level 3 rapid charging and dc rapid charging so these are the different kind of use case if you see here office public filling stations dedicated charging stations dedicated charging stations and the interface what kind of interface are there the electric vehicle supply equipments so basically this is normally known as the charging station other standards as you know the electronics is there so lot of other standards also we have to follow basically i am putting these points here because if you have to develop something it will go through some regulations and then you can able to sell your product to the market so for the designer only designing the things is a not a important part you have to certify the things you have you have to get the certifications and based on that you can sell your product to the market so these kind of standards you have to follow we cannot explain each and every standards but this is the summary and based on that you can follow the other level of standard certifying your power electronics products now quickly going to the i think the ev transmission and control side aman sir aman yeah. sir uh, as you know we have two more panelists yes sorry uh, and then later uh, uh, audience participants may question also so okay, please sir. conclude uh, as soon as thank you okay, okay. summarizing just okay. how much time we have now let us 5 uh, uh, minutes 5 minutes of okay. those 5 to 7 minutes thank you so after charging these are uh, basically uh, means motor control side so if you see we are working now for electric motor earlier generation were the heat engine in electrical motors what kind of ev motors we can go with so these are the different motors available in the market so we we have to work with these motors only with the summary of the ev motors so how we have to select the right motors these are the different parameters in terms of the means uh, basis just a sum summary part and the, these are the three motors only can be used for the ev kind of applications induction motor permanent magnetic motors and synchronous inductance motor so for those motors we have to go with the control system of that so in unregulated markets normally six step controls are there that is normally for bldc kind of motor gun so these are the advantages how they do the bldc controls what kind of micro microcontroller you have to use with will be there then the uh, means the pmsm that is the next level of control that is foc so for foc benefits you have to go with these kind of benefits this is in literature you can i just given the summary of part so now uh, up even the motors and the motor control as well as the means charging there is the new kind of devices are coming into picture these days that is the wide band devices so this is the power level and where uh, those are e silicon carbide and gan how they will be useful at which places what what kind of market 
this from this slide will give you the idea why it is needed this is the dynamics silicon to uh, means uh, al means aluminum nitride so and the silicon carbide and gan already in the market the benefit is due to this and the characteristic parts we have no uh, means body diode and higher you can go with higher switching frequency and your size will be small motivation behind this is a small form factor better efficiency and this is the benefit part of that and uh, and this is the benefit of the silicon carbide and the application wide already these things are available in the market silicon carbide ev applications and the bldc motor kind of application you can see the very small form factor of the bldc motor control 1.5 kilowatt here the gan device is in huge and traction inverter basically this is the backbone of the transmission and control again here you get the better uh, longer driving range and the uh, ev charger also you can see when the we have we get the benefit using the silicon carbide and gan up to 4x sometimes 8x as well thank you thank you sir uh, thank you aman sir thank you very much we will take the question answer session uh, in uh, after presentation of both uh, all uh, panelists so thank you very much uh, at this thank moment a uh, very nice presentation and very informative uh, it was so thank you now i would like to request uh, from neelit kalikat mr manoj kumar ji actually i have attended uh, his uh, training program uh, he conducted five days training program from that uh, training Uh, an idea was came into my 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 mind that we must also conduct uh, such kind of uh, training program or webinar or seminar at uh, iii uttarakhand state center so no sir uh, you can call me as a student also i have attended your program so sri manoj kumar is having 21 years of academic experience and is presently working at National Institute of Electronics and Information Technology, Calicut, as a principal technical officer. The major projects on which he has worked as under hardware design and development, power supply and microcontroller based monitoring part in indigenous color Doppler unit sponsored by Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. Now, similarly. his project uh, his uh, dealing a project hardware design of a smart ventilator similarly universal voltage controller for 25 kilowatt alternator for indian railways 6 axis Noj uh, has seven years experience in industry also, so he is uh, also very versatile and very dynamic uh, young uh, officer. So I request uh, Manoj sir, please uh, go ahead. Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir. Uh, yes oh. sir yes sir yes sir but okay. your uh, camera is on uh, off i think okay here uh, network due to network poor network that is why it should be off okay okay no problem okay thank you gupta sir so due to time limitation quickly i will start with uh, my session of my uh, voice is audible and uh, okay let me load my presentation there is some interruption also uh oh interruption is there sir yeah yeah one second uh are you still okay now 
Hello? Is it okay? Uh, try for, uh, try again. Okay, one second. Yes, voice is coming, but the video is not coming. Yeah, video actually then uh, due to heavy rain or no, some network issue is there. It is very slow. That is why it's actually tough. Okay, okay. So I'm loading my presentation. No problem. Uh, you can uh, yeah. use the audio system all the time. So my PPT is visible? Yeah. Convert into full screen, I think. Yeah, it's already full screen. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So, good evening all. So, for the next 32, I think uh, only 30 minute, minutes is allotted to me. So, the next 30 minute, minutes, I will, I wish to share some basics on electric vehicle technology in general. The major components like uh, uh, battery, charges, I think it has already discussed. Fine. Okay. So, if you take the statistics of reason for air pollution, especially in India, approximately 40% of pollution is contributed by IC engine vehicles. So, it is very important to take initiative to push towards EV adoption to reduce the uh, increasing air pollution. And apart from air pollution, there are some other uh, serious problems for the env environment and human life due to the uh, increased usage of IC engine vehicles. Those are uh, mainly global warming issue, petroleum resources depletion, induced to cause transportation and development strategies, etc. Okay, so I am not uh, going to discuss all those things in detail. Uh, let us start with the types of electric vehicles. What are the major uh, vehicles available? So we'll start with IC engine. IC engine vehicles operates, so you know, it is completely on fuel, like petrol, diesel, or gas, etc. So whereas in HEV, the next segment, HEV or hybrid electric vehicles, both IC engine and battery operated propulsion mechanism is there. And here battery is used for uh, regenerative stopping or regenerative storage and short distance travel. The batteries in HEV cannot be charged with the external power. It will be charged with the power available uh, from the IC engine. The next category, PHEV or uh, plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. It is similar to the hi hybrid electric vehicle. Only difference is that it can be charged with the external power. And uh, FCVs or fuel cell electric vehicles. Here, there are no conventional IC engines. This is pure electric vehicle where fuel cell is used to or fuel cell is used as the energy source and the fuel cells are powered by hydrogen and oxygen. Then finally, uh, BEVs or battery electric vehicles. Here, the vehicle fully operates on battery uh, or battery electric power. Okay, so here is the representation of different uh, types of electric vehicles. Even we have conventional uh, uh, engine IC engine where we have fuel engine and then to the transmission system and in hybrid we have the same fuel engine and transmission system parallelly we have a battery and motor which will also power the transmission system and finally battery electric vehicle have only battery and mo battery motor and transmission and the difference between hybrid and electric vehicle here also uh, hybrid also we have battery motor and generator but this is not full capacity battery and motor it will assist it it will assist the uh, IC engine. Whereas in a fully battery electric vehicle, battery and motor have very high capacity. And uh, let us see the power flow in uh, uh, hybrid electric vehicles. We have battery, IC engine, electronic, electric motor and power train is there, or drive train is there. So when it is starting, what will happen is IC engine is started, engine has started and it will drive the electric motor. In this stage, it will electric motor will act as generator and it will charge the battery. Uh, whereas in stopped condition, there won't be any power flow from IC engine or from the battery. In the passing mode, <clears throat> what will happen is IC engine will power the drive train. At the same time, battery will also or electric motor will also the power train so that it will get more acceleration. And at the braking stage, IC engine will be stopped. So, since due to nature it is running, 
motor 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 is uh, acting as uh, in generator mode and it will generate power and that is stored back in battery this is what is called the regenerative storage and in cruising mode or the vehicle is running at a constant speed uh, IC engine is powering the powertrain at the same time it is driving the motor and charging the battery to a certain level. And next we will see the different types of hybridization. There are even though in hybrid itself we have so many types of hybridization uh, like uh, micro hybrid, mild hybrid, full hybrid and plug-in hybrid. Okay, in my, my micro hybrid an automatic start-stop system is there for retrieving the braking energy and store it in a 12 volt battery and <clears throat> here the vehicle is uh, driven exclusively by the IC engine whereas in mild hybrid uh, an electric motor in the drive system is there but it never works its own and it is used only to support internal combustion engine and uh, uh, it boosts the uh, uh, by supporting the IC engine it boosts the acceleration in addition to the 12 volt battery, in uh, mild hybrids also have a 40, 48 volt battery. Because of uh, higher voltage, it can uh, absorb more braking energy. Mild hybrid vehicles uh, will consume only or will consume 50 percentage less energy compared to the IC engine. And then come to the full hybrid se segment. In full hybrid electric vehicles, an electric motor and an IC engine work together intelligently and flexibly. Pure electric driving is also possible uh, in this type, but usually only on uh, short uh, trips or only short distance travels. Compared to the mild hybrids, full hybrid electric vehicles do not have a 48 volt battery, but have high voltage uh, traction batteries are there with the several uh, hundreds of volts. The power of electric motor is also higher than the uh, uh, mild hybrid. And the last one, the plug-in hybrid, which is similar to the uh, full hybrid vehicle. Only difference is that uh, we can charge it with the external power. This is the simple uh, representation of a, a pure battery electric vehicle. We have traction battery, which is uh, uh, installed in the bottom area or bottom portion of the electric vehicles. And then we have, uh, as discussed in the first session, charging port or onboard, uh, uh, onboard charger is there. And then we have auxiliary batteries are also there, small batteries. And then to the uh, electric traction motor, power electronic controller, because, because we have so many uh, power sections or so many parts are there which is working on different, different voltages. So we need so many DC to DC converter. And finally, a thermal cooling system in which it will cool or heat the battery pack. And then battery electric vehicles, it will uh, run entirely. It, it runs entirely on battery and there is no IC engine and it can be charged by electricity from external source. It, it uses uh, one motor or sometimes more than one motor like uh, single motor system, two motor system or four motor systems are available. And they have a range between 200 to 400 kilometer compared to the 500 kilometer of conventional IC engines and fast charges like uh, Chadamo, Combo, etc. are there in which uh, we will be able to charge 80 percentage of uh, capacity in 30, 30 minutes or in 15 minutes. And benefits of it, 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 uh, EVs. So electric motor is, you, you know, electric motor is far more efficient, like 80 to 90, but nowadays 80 to 90 percentage efficiency motors are available, whereas IC engine efficiency is only 20 to 23 percentage. And EVs can be can use regenerative stopping. Thus, uh, we have a, a thirty percentage uh, uh, energy uh, regain of energy is possible, and air pollution is less, and low maintenance cost. Yes, uh, the um, fifty. I mean, uh, moving parts are fifty times less compared to the conventional type, and low running cost. Generally, five to eight times less compared to the similar IC engine. And next, uh, we will see. Uh, one of the important thing like energy loss comparison in IC engine and uh, electric vehicles. So in IC engine, we have a fuel tank which is connected to the engine and expecting a, a 8 percentage standby loss and 76 percentage engine loss. So only 16 percentage we are getting to the drive line. And from drive line, we are expecting the 3 percentage loss. And finally, uh, 13 percentage will be available on the wheels. 
So out of this 13 percentage, three percentage will go to aerodynamic flows, four percentage for rolling, and six percentage for braking. That is uh, in the case of city driving. So where in highway driving, uh, the same uh, fuel is connected to the engine. Then standby here, standby loss is zero. Engine loss is 77 percentage. 23 percentage we are getting to the drive line and expecting a four percentage load in uh, drive line losses. And finally, we will get a 19 percentage to the wheels. So from this 19 percentage, the 10 percentage will go to uh, aerodynamic, uh, 7 percentage will go to rolling, and 2 percentage will go to braking. So from this, we can see that maximum 19 percentage is, uh, we will get 19 percentage efficiency will get in IC engine. Whereas in uh, electric vehicles, the power is coming from battery, which is given to a motor, Assume that motor is having 90% 90 efficiency and is connected to the drive line. Drive line is having 14% loss, expecting 76% on uh, wheels. So from this 76%, 29 go to aerodynamics, approximately 29 go to aerodynamics, uh, then 35 rolling and uh, uh, braking 11%. Uh, okay, so these are the uh, loose comparison. And now one, one of the important thing, well to wheel efficiency in terms of uh, uh, electric vehicle and IC engine. So we know electric vehicles, they have zero tailpipe emissions, but still there are emissions during energy conversion process. So let us understand the, uh, uh, let, her, let us understand and compare uh, the emissions from vehicles on basis of well to wheel analysis. First, let us understand the form, uh, the term uh, well to wheel. What do you mean by well to wheel? The overall energy flow that occurs from the fuel extraction to the ultimate usage in driving vehicle is called uh, well to wheel. So in IC engines, first it starts with the uh, fuel extraction. Then it is transported to the oil refineries and uh, or uh, it is transported to the oil refineries where there is emission occurring. That stage emission is there. And expecting an efficiency of uh, expecting an efficiency of 82 percentage. Here it is 82 percentage. Then it is distributed to the uh, refueling station and then finally to the vehicles. Here it is, it is um, uh, given to the vehicles. So where the tailpipe emission is there. Here, there are two stages, well to tank and tank to wheel uh, stage. That is, uh, we can call it as, this is the first stage and this is the second stage. So in IC engine, both stages emissions are there. Uh, okay, then uh, in uh, electric vehicles, we have well to tank uh, uh, phase and tank to wheel phase is there. So here also, it will start with the fuel extraction. Then it is uh, transported for uh, power generation, where uh, 30, expecting 33 percentage efficiency. And then uh, transmission, and uh, expecting 94 percentage efficiency. So overall efficiency is, efficiency is 31 percentage. Then it is connected to the electric vehicle. So electric vehicle efficiency, we are expecting 76 percent. So an overall efficiency of 23 percentage we are expecting in EV segment. So here you can see that only 10 percentage efficiency increase is there in using electric vehicles. Why? Because we are uh, depending uh, again fossil fuel for generating the uh, electricity for charging the electric vehicle. So this has to be avoided. So that is why uh, the research uh, are going on to improve the charging uh, section or charges in uh, renewable energy by using renewable energy systems like uh, solar, wind energy, etc. Okay, now quickly we will see what are the energy sources available in electric vehicles. Of course, batteries are there. Apart from batteries, we have fuel cell, ultra capacitors, and ultra high speed flywheels. So, fuel cells nothing but uh, uh, similar to the battery, or it creates electri electricity chemically uh, where the uh, fuel is hydrogen and oxygen. Hydrogen we have to give or we have to store in the battery 
and oxygen it will take from the air so the byproduct is uh, harmful i mean the byproduct is there like what only water is the byproduct so uh, we can say that this is still in the technology development stage even though uh, some uh, prototype models have been uh, introduced but commercially it is not yet launched and the second uh, uh, one is the ultra capacitors so ultra capacitors it will store uh, energy electrostatically similar to the capacitors and the issue is it has less energy density whereas if you have high rapid energy discharge and very high large and very uh, high uh, life cycle is there and uh, that is why it is mainly used as a regenerative energy storage in electric vehicles so due to the low energy density it cannot be used as the major power source in electric vehicles and normally electric i mean ultra capacitors are arranged like this in series parallel combination this i will explain at the time of battery because batteries are also arranged like this and the third one ultra high speed flywheel this also used for um, short duration energy storage like uh, regenerative energy storage here it is stored is mechanically so if energy regener regenerative energy is uh, energy is there it will come through the dc link and through the bidirectional converter it will run the motor and that uh, energy or that will drive the uh, flywheel and uh, when it is discussed flywheel it, it, it will rotate continuously and when we need to use energy back this motor is again connected to the flywheel means this will act as generator mode and since it is bidirectional converter this energy is used by this dc link uh, when the complete energy is used by um, uh, this uh, particular section means the field becomes okay then next we will see the uh, i mean and battery cell is a single unit device it converts chemical energy into mechanical energy so if you are connecting so many cells in series parallel combination to oh, achieve our desired voltage and power capacity that is what is called the called as the battery this is the simple cell and here so many or more than one cells are connected in a series or parallel combination that is called as battery and then uh, again uh, as far as batteries are con battery is concerned there are import there are so many important terms Uh, which will normally use like uh, power capacity. Normally, battery capacity will express in terms of watt hour or sometimes kilowatt hour or sometimes kilowatt. Like battery capacity such as where for example, uh, next one it is 29.2 kilowatt, 29.2 kilowatt. Like that, it is this way. So, what is <clears throat> what do you mean by watt hour? Watt hour is nothing but uh, voltage into current into hours. So, in this particular term uh, here, battery I mean uh, voltage is constant. so sometimes we will refer as ampere hour also instead of kilowatt hour or watt hour we will express it in terms of uh, ampere hour that means for example a 2500 milliampere hour battery which means uh, it has a capability to deliver 2.5 ampere or 2500 milliampere for one hour that is the uh, that is what you mean by a 2500 milliampere battery and the next important is the c rate that is very important as far as a battery is concerned c rate is a measure of the rate at which a battery is discharged relative to maximum capacity a battery is discharged or it can charge a one c rate means that it can discharge current will discharge the entire battery in one hour similarly a one c battery can be charged fully at the rate of one hour and then next is the battery soc this is nothing but the uh, a percent how much uh, charge is there in uh, available there in the battery for example uh, suppose the soc is 80 percentage of uh, a battery of 500 h capacity that means a 400 h uh, 80 percentage of 500 400 h is available presently available in the battery the next important thing is cyclic life or cycle life as far as uh, batteries are concerned its uh, life is specified in terms of cycle Cycles, not in terms of years, similar to other products, other electronic products. So a cycle is nothing but a one full full charge and discharge is what is called the life cycle. How many such uh, cycles we will get throughout the battery period or throughout the life of that particular uh, product? That is what is the life cycle of that battery. For normal uh, EV batteries like lithium-ion batteries, we will get nine hundred to some thousand six hundred or thousand eight hundred according to the SOC. the more number of life cycle the better will be the battery's uh, quality and then internal resistance this is not a physical resistance uh, the if you if you take the internal details of a battery there will be a series resistor 
in series with the I mean there, there is a resistor connected in series with the cell so which will be generating the heat so if you are discharging uh, current from battery or if you are charging the battery heat will be generated why because there is an i square r loss in this that uh, internal resistor that is how it is generating the heat this is a comparison between the soc and the uh, internal resistance so normally 22 in heavy batteries we will uh, uh, use the uh, soc from 20 to 80 so below 20 and normally above 80 we won't use so here you can see that 20 to 80 the internal resistance is almost constant so this is the drive rate normally 20 to 80 percent we will do use the drive rate and then next important thing is the state of health so state of health give you the age of the battery so typically a battery is so it will be 100 percentage at the time of manufacture and it will decrease over the moment you started discharging from the battery this so it value will be coming down and when it is reaches a particular level like if a so it reaches 80 percentage then we can uh, say that that particular battery is not uh, suitable for um, ev application for that particular segment then lithium ion battery i am explaining only about lithium ion battery we have so many types of batteries because lithium ion batteries are now commonly used for ev application why because we know it is very uh, dangerous uh, material and explosive materials we are using but uh, as far as cost and availability all those things are concerned uh, lithium uh, lithium ion battery is uh, better but uh, in terms of safety it is very um, in uh, safety aspect Uh, there are so many measures are required to, to protect the battery so we have other ranges of vehicle in batteries also but uh, it has its own uh, advantages and disadvantages so, uh, sometimes uh, cost is more or sometimes power density is less so a uh, good battery in terms of uh, or good technology in terms of uh, energy density and safety needs to be developed okay then when we speak about the cell architecture in ev So there are three mainly three terms like cell module and pack so cell means the basic cell and module so many cells are connected in as we discussed previously so many cells are connected in series parallel combination this is the module and module with the other parts like onboard charger and the cooling me mechanism all those things that, that is what is called the pack and this pack is arranged or uh, placed at the bottom portion of the electric vehicle and uh, this is these are some examples like for hybrid vehicles uh, we can see that it is capacity from 0.5 to 2 kilowatt hour and battery voltage is normally 100 to 200 volt and plug in it is uh, capacity is little bit more 4 to 20 kilowatt and voltage is also 100 to 200 and pure electric vehicles it is 30 to 100 kilowatt hour this is the capacity of battery no sir and whereas the whole, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Next, so that we can right, listen, listen sir oh. Only five minutes. I have only five. Minutes. Oh, four oh. hundred to eight hundred volts. So next is the EV battery stru structure. Uh, we have a high voltage connector, coolant inlet, and coolant outlet. And uh, there are so many uh, protection me other mechanisms. This is the complete uh, EV battery structure. And uh, another important thing: temperature effects of battery. So that is very very important nowadays. You can uh, you might have uh, heard that so many batteries are exploded, and so many so many EV batteries are uh, exploded. it is purely because of the temperature issue so there are two mainly two things like uh, two reasons for uh, generating the temperature the, uh, first is internal heat generation as we discussed previously in the um, uh, internal resistance due to i square r loss there will be heat generating this will increase the heat of the battery and it will uh, affect the battery performance and the second thing the effect of surrounding environment and or ambient temperature so that also affect the battery life so internal resistance rises as temperature decreases and higher temperature reduces life and vice versa and lower temperature reduces the capacity there are some important uh, things related to battery I mean temperature effects like less than 5 degree centigrade cannot be fast charge that is not possible and less than 0 degree battery lose charge and loss in power acceleration driving range etc and greater than 30 degree centigrade battery performance will degrade and greater than 40 degree can can lead to serious irreversible damage that means 15 to 30 percentage is ideal for a battery so we need to maintain the temperature uh, uh, always uh, in between 15 to 35 temperature so battery thermal management there will be a battery thermal management system in every uh, electric vehicles 
and the role of uh, uh, thermal management system is cooling the system where extra ambient temperature is less and uh, heating if ambient temperature is very really low and then insulation ventilation all those things so ventilation the sense at the time of charging it will generate some uh, fumes like uh, i mean uh, flammable fumes that has to be exhausted from the and uh, battery pack so charges i am not uh, going to i don't want to discuss because it has been discussed already by uh, amen sir in the first session so i will con i am concluding uh, my session with this thank you thank you manoj sir really very wonderful and informative session thank you thanks uh, we will be in uh, in contact with you uh, so that uh, we can uh, we are also planning uh, some courses for entrepreneurs so that they can uh, establish uh, i mean ev charger uh, yeah or ev charging stations so now all panelists are uh, very uh, 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 delivered very information uh, very good information so now i am inviting a gold man gold man uh, it means uh, he has uh, received various awards first prizes gold medals etc so uh, that is why i uh, i called him the gold man dr nishant kumar he is from iit jodhpur now i am uh, reading his brief introduction dr nishant kumar is an assistant professor at iit jodhpur before joining iit jodhpur he was a post doctoral research fellow at national university of singapore in the department of electrical and computer engineering he has completed his phd from iit delhi india in the department of electrical engineering where is phd thesis was awarded as the best thesis award at iit delhi his phd thesis was also awarded to the first prize in ieee industry application society thesis contest 2020 moreover during his research he has received power system operation and cooperation uh, i mean corporation national award uh in doctoral category and i triple s phd thesis award 2020 at iit uh, isc bangalore he has completed his mtech from nit durgapur where the university has awarded his research work to the gold medal in front of president of india shri pranab mukherjee ji in between his phd uh, mtech and phd degree he has worked as project engineer and research associate at iit bombay and iit delhi he has completed the bachelor degree btech from silicon institute of technology bhubaneswar india where he was awarded the best technical student award recently he was felicitated by ieee to ieee senior member and by the dst government of india to young scientist award to represent india in fifth brics 2020 young scientist conclave which was held in russia moreover he has received the outstanding young professional volunteer award by ieee india council he is a fellow member of institution of engineers and telecommunication engineers society and editor in few ieee transactions he has more than 60 publications including 30 ieee transactions uh, transactions and eight indian and us patents his areas of research interest include optimization algorithm development renewable power generation microgrid smart grid and application of of adaptive control and optimization in power and energy sector so very yeah, i am feeling very proud to read this uh, bio uh, data of nishant kumar ji really i am uh, very uh, delighted to know about you 
now okay, i sir. would like to uh, listen you what is your opinion in yeah. future of, and potential of ev char uh, vehicles so sir thank you sir thank you well. for this long discussion <laughs> about you uh, first of all i'm sharing my screen and then i'm going to discuss in detail so <clears throat> so i hope my screen is visible uh, i think keep it in full screen sir yeah i think it is in full screen okay so okay. uh, now i think it is in full screen and i am audible properly yeah. so first of all before going to start this session first of all i like to i would like to thank gupta sir for a detailed introduction about me manoj kumar panda sir for inviting me for this sessions and all the organizing committee members and volunteers of this session so first of all i like to thank for that and i am welcoming you all for this session mainly i will discuss today uh, for a futuristic view of the electric vehicles means i today i will discuss about the a future view of the solar solar powered electric vehicles so first of all i want to clear here so this electric vehicle is not a only a conceptual level already in market this type of electric vehicles are running so this is your light your dutch company is manufacturing this type of vehicle means the vehicle is made of solar panels and also few other things are also here so i will discuss all those aspects how this is working and how this is useful here so mainly you will focus on the solar electric vehicles available uh, electric vehicles so mainly you will see in the broader way the the first is the battery based electric vehicles which is cheaper and the in the current market this is running with the full strength so this is the first one and if you will think about the future future is our fuel based means of fossil fuel based so you can say the fuel cell based electric vehicles is the future of our our electric vehicle market so in the future we will use the hydrogen tanks and the fossil fuels uh, reactors and then generate the electricity and we will use in the electric vehicle so this is the future and this is the present where we are but in between we have some another section means solar powered electric vehicles also so this company like your dutch company this this company has invented these things for this concept the concept says that here the upper body of the electric vehicle the vehicle will made of this semiconductor materials so this body structure is made of the semiconductor panel materials means that here we are not going to install a solar panel on the rooftop of the vehicle no it is not like that if we will do like this it means we are going to disturb the aerodynamic structure of the vehicle if we will disturb that then drag force will increase and as the mono sir has discussed the percentage of usage so if we will disturb the structure the percentage of power losses will increase right so we are not going to do that the concept is that here the upper body of the electric vehicle is made of this semiconductor materials and also one other thing so is this solar panel or install solar panel is sufficient to run this vehicle answer is directly no this solar panel which we will install on the top is not you will not generate sufficient power to run the vehicle but yes the meaning is or use of this is it will generate some amount of energy which will support the vehicle means in current conditions when we are going with the battery pack so entire power means 100% power we will take from the grid charge our battery and use here but here if you will use this solar, solar panel as a as a your body so you will generate some amount of power and it will support your battery right and it will also depend on the uses also for example suppose someone you someone is going to use this vehicle for office use this morning we are going from home to office and the throughout the day suppose your vehicle is in a open space in a parking zone so throughout the day power will generate and store in your battery in evening we are coming back so in this situation we can say this this structure based solar panel is sufficient for your entire journey but same time suppose someone is using this type of vehicle for the commercial use throughout the day this vehicle is running or moving in our society here the day means 8 hour not for the 24 hour because sun is sun will level more and less 8 hour so i'm when i'm take off over the day it means 8 hour so this in this 8 hour this solar panel or this solar powered based electric vehicles will generate some fraction of energy and it and help you so research says that it will depend on the use as well as the geographical locations so more and less minimum size if you will go with this then you will see that the your 20 to 30% of the power support you will see from these panels so the this this company is working on that and then they are generating power and using here 
and not only this car company as well as also you can see the utilization of this type of things in australia where you will see the 100 percent solar power solar power train similarly some other companies are also a small vehicle companies just like a toyota biode this is that they are also using these panels on the top and and trying to generate some fraction of power and using our the vehicles so this is in the running structure but what is the technical uh, yeah, i will say the technical issue here so that thing i want to trigger here so in general you will see inside the vehicle more or less three to four converters you will see for utilization purpose so the first converter you will see here suppose we are going to use one rooftop solar panel based uh, vehicle so the one converter one dedicated dc dc converter you will see for the solar panel and this will start the panel uh, power from the panel and push on the dc bus but definitely this power is not sufficient for those vehicles so definitely we will use or utilize the battery and to support this power so you will see one battery bank and this battery bank will attack with a bi-directional dc dc converter so one other converter will be with the battery and after that you will see the third converter with the motors means the motor may be the uh, ac motor or dc motor so according to the motor so here you will see the dc dc or dc ac converter for those motors right and then this three is the for the power management side but as well as well as you can see the sometime you will see the fourth converter also if here the onboard charging infrastructure has used so you will see the fourth one is here is the fourth converter if your vehicle is based on the onboard charger so you will see the one charger adapter so on that case you will see this, this converter is outside as a charging adapter so more or less three to four converters we will see and then all the converters are working in a coordinated manner but here no any technical issue in the coordination coordination is okay but the issue is with the panel side so i will focus on these things what is the issue here so in normal conditions you will see, you will see on the panel or you look on the panel then you will see the power characteristics are looked like this one so you can you can see on the screen so this is very smooth single peak characteristics when the sun solar light is falling on the panel and this is the characteristics by using the simple algorithm we can we can operate our converter and then generate the power and we will utilize here but in the vehicle side this is not that much smooth because when we are going to move our vehicle in our society it means the shadow of the tower tall buildings trees pillars or sometimes your neighboring uh, vehicles also will fall on the fall on the panel it means you always some shadow will also on your vehicle when vehicle is moving in our society so when the shadow will fall on the vehicle means the panel it means that time you will see the characteristics will deteriorate and the characteristic of the solar panel will deteriorate and here you will see the multiple peaks so in this situations multiple peaks means this is the power in the, the work axis is voltage this characteristic says that or depicts that if you will operate only on this voltage then only you will get this maximum power similarly here if you will operate your panel on this voltage then only you will get the maximum power so for, for a single characteristics, single peak situation, this is it is easy to find out this peak and operate on the maximum power point you can see. But here, when the solar the shadow is going to fall, and then your characteristic is deteriorating like that, then analyzing or choosing this voltage or betting voltage is a very uh, uh, challenging point here. And this this shadow may be any any time, right? So according to the shadow, the characteristic may be like that. And the, when the characteristic will deteriorate, then your algorithm should track that. Then only you will get the maximum power like that. So this is the first thing. But the, another challenge is here. Here our vehicle is not a uh, not in a steady state mode, right? The vehicle is moving, running with the speed of b. It means what? Shadow is also going to change. Once the shadow is changing, so the characteristics one characteristic will change with the other with the speed of b. So here the speed is high, then characteristic will also change with the high speed. So this characteristic change is a dynamic issue here. If our panel is a static or as a rooftop panel, then it is easy by using any simple algorithms, we can track that. But here in the vehicle side, this is moving with a high speed. So this is the one challenge in a high dynamic conditions, how we will track that similarly. And another thing, suppose someone will say, I, I will not use my vehicle in a open space right uh, sorry in the source in a society so that the shadow will fall i will run my vehicle in a uh, I, uh, on a highway so no shadow will fall on that the characteristic will be smooth but the answer is no 
because this solar panel is not a uh, rooftop so like a like a rooftop solar panel or you can say not a you can say plain uh, rectangular seal right this is according to your curved structure of the vehicle means this panel is made of according to the aerodynamic structure and mostly this is a curved in nature so if shadow is not falling direct sun is interacting with this panel but on that condition also you will see the here the deterioration you will find because of this curved structure this curved because of this curved you will see that some light reflects and then this right reflected light di disturbs the path of other and then light means what photons when the light is reflecting means what Fo photon is coming back and jumping so when the come back photons will strike the other radiance and you will see that here the characteristics is not smooth or not with a single single peak so here again without shading also conditions because of this curved structure you will see the characteristics is consist of multiple peaks so in this situation tracking or finding is a big issue with the high speed and this is a not a fixed thing it will change with the speed of b so maybe any anything and this is the key issue of the the vehicle side but the same thing you will see on the rooftop side also but here the dynamic type of things you will not find with the, in the snow area if you will say think about the desert area then also because of the heavy dust storms the shading comes right and also the same issue has also reported on the mars rover also the nasa has reported this issue so because of the heavy dust storm this type of shading or partial shading conditions on the vehicles also and then power is decreased around 20 25% so this is the critical issue so if we we will look on the uh, tracking side so tracking the topology wise very similar we will use one dc dc converter as i discussed but here the our algorithm will change and this algorithm should that much efficient so that we can finalize the where is the peak and we, what is the operating positions operating voltage so that we will get the maximum power right so and here the characteristic is changing with the high speed so if you look on the characteristics characteristic characteristic is changing with a very high speed so according to nrl report if you will look on the nrl report so nrl report says that considerable solar irradiance change occurs in one second and this is the report of 2018 so it means what so we have to finish our search within a second if we are not able to search finish our search within a second it means we are going to lose the power and already we know that the solar panel is a not efficient thing here the commercial level solar panel efficiency is around 20% or 21% like that so if solar panel is already less efficient and if you will lose the power power extraction then again we are going to disturb the entire things so if you will look on the literature survey you will see the lot of technique have already in invent for that but here out of thousands of technique only one or two technique you will see that they have the capability to finish the search within a second and the according to my survey this is only one technique was that the floor of pollination optimization and the timing was 0.85 second it means 85% time investing for searching and only 15% time this technique says that it will operate on the full strength means what we are going to lose the power again so here this says this conditions this problem says that we have to think about a new technique so that we can we can uh, track as early as possible so for that purpose i had developed one technique this is human psychology optimization technique little bit i am going through through this and then in detail you can see in the papers this technique is mainly based on the four factors in the self motivation lessons inspiration and the excitement these are the four factors for any ambitious person means any ambitious persons how they take uh, decides anything before taking any physical actions so these are the psychological st status or you can say psychological thoughts so before taking any physical actions so self motivations means you it is based on your past experiences inspirations means you know someone who is good in this zone so what what to do so you can learn from that and the excitement this is a this is based on our uh, our own uh, strength strength may be the young slim good health knowledge whatever you have so this is your excitement factor another relations from the failures failures of other we can also learn and then that concept we can use so i have more mathematically i derived that for this optimization issue and this optimization tech issue this technique is based on all those four factors and by using all those four factors i have derived this final equations so this is the vector vector in form 
so the, this is the self motivations and the uh, self uh, and this excitement and this is the your inspirations and these are lessons inspiration and lesson may be multiple it will depend on the di distance right and then you see the finally the, all the vectors and add and it will update so this update updation process whatever i have derived here it is not that was random so here again in each iterations i have gone through the potential of those those updated updated strain, uh, agents so what is the performance so the good performers average performers and poor performers and then according to these rules all the poor performers will not participate so here i have used the chromosomes technique to generate the new set of technique new set of agents to solve finish the search and then this is based on that through the paper you can go through that and also you can think about a new technique how you will search and finish the finish the search in the time right so i have tested these things of for the solar this is the circuit sorry this is the circuit and on this circuit i have considered the different patterns so these are the pattern i have taken so you will see that the, here the result is 0.48 second so according to my results this is based on the 0.48 second it means still we have 48% time we are investing for the searching and the 52% time is only for the full time but this is the my achievement but also you can think to decrease this time so that we can extract the more and more power so you can see here the trackings how this is happening i will go into the one uh, aerodynamics not sorry uh, simulations so you can look like that and also this is the experimental setup where i tested that and, and finally i this conclusions so this technique what i discussed here definitely i discussed in a short but through this i have achieved that on the experimental setup this technique is capable to finish the search within 0.51 second on the experimental setup right so this is the achievement of this but still in other word you can say still we are investing 50% time for the searching so here you can think how you will reduce that right and then this 0.5 second is a small number you can say but if you look and compare with the state of the art technique then you will see in every second we are we are gaining this 0.32 second for full strain if you will look for the daily daily does not 24 hour daily means 8 hour so this is a big number then you will see this is a 2.56 hour yearly this is a very big number and then average power differences with respect to the other techniques is around 20 to 30 percent extra energy we can save by using this small time difference so this is the way i have gone through that and try to solve this issue but you can also think so whatever the other techniques or modified techniques you will go use to reduce the time during the dynamic conditions when vehicle is going to move with a very high speed right so i am working currently with the lightyear dutch company as well as toyota also to on the same project to how we can, we can reduce the time further so you can also think about this thank you thank you thank you nishanthi uh, you have uh, suggested that the problem of the charging of electric vehicle through uh, solar panels also so uh, very nice presentation very uh, informative and uh, this this i think this is, uh, your research work is also going on uh, this topic also yes sir. so yeah so now is the time for uh, audience and uh, they may ask any questions now we have uh, two questions uh, the panelists may decide uh, uh, who can uh, who will answer the question uh yes there is uh, one question from mr yes arora uh, he is telling that uh, as we can see batteries are generally installed in the bottom part of the vehicle how it is useful for those, those cities where floods are major issues very uh, um, uh, i mean intelligent question and what are the measures taken related to the vehicle safety so uh, i think uh, any panelist may answer this uh, during flood how we can protect uh, i think uh, the packaging is uh, so uh, nice then uh, the flood yes aman sir Yes. Aman sir is I think in yeah, yeah. yeah. If we have to develop the any product, there is some IP certification. So what class of your product is, we have to justify that. 
the reason behind uh, basically i think i'm audible hello hope yeah. i'm audible the reason yeah, behind, yeah. Uh, behind the battery to uh, the bottom part of the vehicle it is totally given by the mechanical field. it is center of gravity so that is the reason it is uh, uh, but uh, safety aspect it is uh, taken care by the ip certification if we have ip69 and again there is one more certification that is ik ik7 ik10 kind of certification what impact whatever impact you have to put on your uh, means so object for example electronic products so what what is their capability to handle them? so it is all depends on the product certification qualification and uh, where it can be used uh, thank you thank you actually um, gravity uh, due to gravity point of view the ba uh, battery has to install at the bottom yeah, yeah. And the all precautions uh, are uh, taken care of yes sir. now uh, one more question uh, if institution of engineers of india can provide online certified courses on electric vehicles it would be great for students who are passionate about this field i think uh, 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 mano sir uh, has conducted such uh, such type of the training program so institution of engineers may also join uh, his training program to facilitate such students so uh, Manoj sir and Arora sir may uh, respond on this question. Hello, yes, yes. Uh, sir. Uh, queries regarding the certification. No? Yeah. So actually, uh, online certifications we are already providing, but uh, regarding the offline and all, we are yet to uh, find out or yet to procure some more equipment so uh, that is in the like uh, the, <clears throat> currently we have uh, given a proposal uh, preparing a proposal for a full fledged uh, uh, lab after that we will think of, think of uh, offline programs because offline pro once offline program is there that that is the, that is that is that only very beneficial to the participants because hands on sessions are required that is very much important yes so we are in that uh, process Anyway, so, personally, online already it is there. Online certification. Already. Yes, uh, courses are already there, and and Nilet is leading in this uh, program. So II may also uh, facilitate uh, students of uh, who are interested in joining this. So we can communicate. We can uh, become the bridge between Nilet and uh, students also. Arora sir, would you like to tell something? Uh, at the moment, we don't have such courses online. But uh, if few students come up for this purpose, we can organize to, with the collaboration with the native. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anurag sir, uh, would you like to? I think uh, he's on, on way. OK. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yeah. uh, I would like to add something to this. And uh, this is uh, like uh, Nile Territory is uh, organizing training programs in most of the future skill technologies. And very soon we are planning to start a program in online mode for uh, EVs also. Okay. So uh, 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 we can share details uh, with IEI and uh, so that uh, the link of the uh, website is uh, shared with all the participants of this webinar. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now, okay. Thank uh, you, there sir. is, uh, yes, sir. Some more speaker is, yes. Uh, there is a question, uh, not question, I mean, uh, uh, request. Sir, may I get PPTs? So, panelist uh, may respond. Uh, so now another question yeah, is, I, I can share i can share oh. the PPT. so uh, those who are interested please provide uh, your mail so that uh, we can provide the uh, 
your mail to panelists, they will send directly. Okay. Uh, I think uh, Deep Chandra Bhatt is answered. Now, Travender Pal Singh Arora. I have been some electric buses who caught fire at top roof where batteries are placed. So, uh, what is the reason? And the, uh, I think uh, he wanted to know. And Nishan, sir? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. When someone will put the battery on the top, then definitely here the two things. First of all, the standard violations, you can say, according to the Indian standard IS 17885, as I remember, in 2022, the government has decided. So the battery should be down. And, and the down is not only for the because of these norms. So one thing is that when we are using the battery, means the leadership battery, or lithium and battery, whatever battery, so you will see that the because of the internal assistance, the battery is going to heat up. And if you will put your battery on the top, it means what? The climate means the solar light will fall on the upper body. And then again, you will see the heating is from the outer side as well as your internal system. It's both side heating, right? So definitely the fire will occur. So that's why because of these reasons, the fire is occurring where the battery is putting on the top. But according to all, as I know, the IT poly norms, ISI norm, IS norm, in every norms, you will see the battery should be down because of this. So you will protect properly. So these are the reasons. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now, there is one more question Fini Fatima, from Fini Fatima. Sir, what are measures taken to address the power quality produced by EV on grid? I think uh, Aman sir has... Uh, uh, yeah, actually, uh, power quality... Uh, about the... the V2X yes, uh, charging. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Actually, uh, if we go to the you know, power quality norms, there is uh, IEC norms there. It depends on the power level of the battery charger. So that norms, I think I am given in the reference there. There is the standards. Based on that, you have to develop your power supply. If, is it coming on class three, class two? What, what category of your power supply is there? Maybe electric cycle charger could be some other certifications. Basically, EMI as well as the uh, PhD, these two are the norms. So, uh, there are a number of questions for online courses. They are, uh, I think, students are interested. So, we will provide the uh, uh, facility or if uh, Nilit is uh, going to organize, then we will uh, communicate to you in our website also. Okay. So uh, there is uh, uh, Deep Chandra Bhatt has given the uh, mail ID. I will, uh, I'm going to note down and the PPT will be provided for you. Now, uh, one more question. What is your opinion for pass out heading for IT jobs? Even after having good knowledge in technical core fields, how can we keep it up with core fields? So I think uh, anyone may... Mano, sir, can you respond? He is, I think... Uh, pass out, uh, graduated from diploma or uh, engineering. He wanted to know the how he can uh, update for IT jobs. I think it is not related to the subject of electrical making. Think, yeah. So, yeah. so we can discuss it later on. Okay. Uh, he can send us the details, which courses he wants, or which uh, yes. courses or when the specialization specialization he has done. Okay. Uh, at suitable time, we can guide him. Uh, Susmita Behra is telling very informative. Please share PPT and courses from uh, Nilit email. So okay, we will provide the. Ranjan is also up, uh, asking for PPT. And 
number of uh, participants are giving the mail id we will provide then uh, one more question surendra shrestha what are role of superconductor in ev what are role of superconductor in ev i think uh, this will be the last question and we will conclude that is not that is super capacitor uh, yeah uh, super uh, super uh, he is uh, telling the capac uh, he has written the capacitor i think it will be super conductor super yeah, conductor i think one of the slide i was explaining about super uh, capacitor or ultra capacitor both are same super capacitor and ultra capacitor is both are same so normally it is used as uh, uh, regenerative energy storage in electric vehicles since it is unlimited or more than 1 million uh, or 1 lakh uh, uh, life cycles it is mainly used as the uh, regenerative energy storage device instead of battery this can be used but the main uh, limitation is its energy density is very less that means the size will become size is more so that is why it cannot be used as the major power source in electric one thing i will add here so in some cases you will see the ultra capacitor is mainly using for the battery support conditions also because suddenly you are giving a accelerator what it means you want a sudden speed right within a second so the battery discharge rate is not that much quick with respect to what you are going giving in the command but when you look on the ultra capacitor side so the ultra capacitor discharge rate is in the millisecond in within 0.3 second ultra capacitor can provide a huge amount of power but you can't get those power by using a battery conventional battery so most of the time you will see the ev is always coming with the ultra capacitor or super capacitor to to reach this expectations when you are giving accelerator acceleration and reaching that speed or not so for that purpose you will see some time it is used so thank you sir uh, uh, this way webinar is very informative or very uh, talented panelists uh, presented uh, their uh, research works and uh, uh, the audience and the uh, audience has participated very uh, uh, patiently uh, at present uh, there are approximate 70 uh, participants so uh, i think uh, we must conclude with uh, our uh, honorary secretary sir to express his uh, vote of thanks for the panel panelist and the chairman uttarakhand state center as well as the uh, electric, electric division board so over to uh, johan sir johan sir is very energetic person uh, sri johan he is a fellow of the institution of engineers served in ongc for 31 years in drilling and exploration of oil and gas he retired as general manager in year 2016 he also served in bhl haridwar in turbo generator engineering and dcm foundry division as at rupar he owned the degree in law llb he is mba ma in yoga he is impaneled arbitrator and certified charter engineer from the institution of engineers before taking over the charge as institution of engineers he was ec member in last two terms and actively involved in various activities of uttarakhand state center so i invite with honor sri satish chandra chauhan ji thank you thank you very much gupta ji and uh, professor sudeep kumar kala chairman electricity engineering division board of institution of engineers and uh, our dharam chandra chairman uttarakhand state center and uh, my learned speaker mr anur anurag kumar director nilit haridwar manoj kumar principal technical officer national institute i mean to say nilit and uh, dr aman jha gm r and d lighting electronics 
corporate research and innovation department hevel noida and uh, learned our uh, speaker mr nisan kumar assistant professor in institution sorry or indian institute of technology jodhpur and uh, my colleague moderator dc gupta ji and council members corporate members committee members students learned ladies and gentlemen good evening to you all it is my great privilege to propose a vote of thanks on this wonderful occasion of the webinar on future trend of uh, and potential in electric vehicle and charging station on behalf of institution of engineers uttarakhand state center i extend my gratitude to professor sudhir kumar kalla chairman electricity engineering division board of institution of engineers for sparing the time from the his busy schedule and gracing this occasion i thanks and appreciate the efforts of my uttarakhand state center organizing committee for conducting this informative and knowledgeable session on future trend and potential of electric vehicle and charging station i also extend my gratitude to dr j saxena director technical and mr sudeep chakravarti who has been the continuously with us assistant director technical of institution of engineers for providing the platform for this webinar i express my heartly gratitude to panelist anurag kumar mr manoj kumar dr aman jha mr nisan kumar and my friend moderator dc gupta with the growing concern about the environment and reducing the fossil fuel reserve the world is moving towards the sustainable fuel and modes of transport one of the four runner are the battery operated electrical vehicle as you have uh, listened from our learned person the positive aspect of the electrical vehicles are that the these can be charged at many time and uh, at many places also like home workshop mall parks and sports and road etc however proper and suitable charging in infrastructure will need to be place electrical vehicle are running on road because of the innovation of industry and startup to overcome the hindrances keeping in view of the opportunity in enhancement of industry growth on electrical vehicle and electrical vehicle charging station in the forthcoming year the government has also come out with the many initiative to increase to increase the enter, entrepreneur to explore business opportunity in the electrical vehicle and allied industry so i my learned just you see this na dr aman ja he has uh, and taught us about the charging scheme just like a uh, three scheme just just was the very interesting just uh, i will say this na conductive inductive and swapping the battery so this is the coming up and uh, he has given that this classification of the electrical vehicle also just like a induction motor and permanent and synchronizing motor and he has also very nicely explained on the electric charging also similarly our learned panelist manoj kumar from nilik kalikat he has given the type of the vehicle and energy sources and uh, how to control that there is the temperature problem he has as uh, well discussed about that control of the temperature of the battery and uh, how to manage that there are the cooling heating and uh, insulation etc and very nice and uh, my very learned uh, panelist this nisan kumar he has given the one of the key how to 
how you can compensate this uh, charging uh, problem by the solar panel by uh, solar panel putting on the our vehicle so sir, sir. so and uh, even on the train and buses also how we can put the panel and compensate the, this uh, charging and uh, electric uh, how to compensate the charging so, sir. so in the last i would like to express my gratitude to I, all my esteemed delegates of the web, webinar for their presence and contribution to make this webinar very success and our this uh, in the last or this uh, uh, i mean to say the question answer session it was is a very attractive i think that all the people who has joined it and taken the very keen interest in this the uh, and the, the most demanding subject on electrical vehicle and their charging station okay thank you very much once again jai hind jai bharat so thank you sir thank you very much uh i think uh, uh, we must thank to dr manoj panda ji uh, who introduced two panelists dr amandha and uh, dr nishant a really very wonderful uh, uh, experts and we thank to mr ranjan and mr anurag who Uh, communicated uh, mr manoj kumar from kalikat so all are uh, very very informative and very pot uh, having the potentials on in their field so we have received nine emails i will send to all panelists if you can share their uh, your ppt then uh, we are very much obliged so so uh, i think uh, we must conclude and uh, stop the uh, this webinar with uh, uh, wishing all the very best to participants and the panelists so still there are uh, uh, almost 60 uh, participants and uh, again we are very much thankful to sudhir sir for having uh, very uh, energetic uh, vibrations from you uh, and uh, professor mr dharamchand ji and uh, chauhan sir and our uh, office persons mr pano uh, mr pawan and anil and other uh, uh, staff members who has Uh, who have contributed very well for uh, making this successful webinar so now once again uh, thank you namaskar and pranam thank you thank, thank you thank very you. much for an excellent uh, uh, webinar i congratulate all the uttarakhand and nishi uh, gupta ji aapko bhi bahut bahut badhai bahut achhi tarah aapne organize kara hai amazon ke thank you very much okay uh, all the you. best oh, sudeep so sir ka jo technical uh, assistant director technical hain unka bhi bahut bahut dhanyawad bahut bahut dhanyawad chakravarti sahab thank you sir thank you thank you thank you thank you sir okay okay dharmchand ji thank you bye thank you sir thank you kala sir with permission of the chair can i end the webinar uh, yes you can Close. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. Close, close, sir. Okay. Thank yes, you, Mr. Chakravarti. Thank you. 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 Thank